Yo, Lewis! What? Look at him! What? Look at him! <laughs> Where are you getting this from? Hey, everybody. How's it going? Today, I'd like to share some FUD from the Entertainment Software Association, which lobbies against right to repair for the video game and console industry, while Blackberry the kitten sits on my lap. She's very cute, and she jumped up here right before I hit start recording. She's my adorable little kitten. She is so cute, and she's a much better kitty than she is a stock. Now, what we're going to do today is discuss this infographic that has been presented. Here's what I find when it comes to lobbying for right to repair and politicians. When you have politicians that are dealing with lots of hot button issues that get their voter base riled up, whether it's health care, immigration, taxation, gun rights, all this other stuff, a lot of stuff like right to repair just goes to the wayside. A lot of the politicians don't really understand it. And if they don't understand it, their voter base is not riled up over it. And a lobbyist puts this little infographic in front of them that tells them how to vote and why they should vote that way. Don't listen to the infographic if they don't hear from anybody else. So people are always putting in my comment section, what can I do to help? How can I help? What can I do? Tell me what to do. What you can do, go to repair.org, see if there is a bill for your state. If there's not a bill for your state, suggest to your state representatives that they introduce a right to repair bill based on what's going on in, I think, 17 different states at this point. And if there is, here's what you can do. Here's how you can help. You can call them up or you can email them. Tell them why that legislation is important to you. Then you can preempt the arguments that they're going to read on papers like this. So what I find is whether or not this is the way the world should be is different from the way it actually is, is that usually if you're able to create the first impression with someone, that first impression sticks. So if you get to your legislator before these infographics get to your legislator, then you can typically... Uh, make an impression that lasts. And I want to show you an example of that later in the video. So if you're able to say, here is what you're going to hear from people who are against right to repair. Here's why that's not true and why this is important. That'll stick. You want that to stick so that when they read the infographic, they go, oh, yeah, someone told me this is BS and they told me that's what you're going to say. And that's exactly what you said. BS. That's what you want from your legislator. So I'm going to read this. This is from the Entertainment Software Association. The ESA is known for uh, for, for gems like this. which Guards against sophisticated theft or piracy to help the piracy video game software and hardware have. If a video game console's firmware runs a verification check on a game and it is not a legitimate copy, the video game won't play the console. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> the video game plays the console. The console doesn't play the game. The game plays the console. So it, it, again, it doesn't take much to create better arguments than what the politicians are going to hear from these lobbyists. What, what it does take is a concerted, organized effort from people to actually contact our legislators and let them know. So this here is a right to repair informative packet. This is the kind of thing that gets sent to a lot of politicians to try to inform them how to vote on a particular issue. Today's video game devices offer consumers high-end, state-of-the-art, multifunctional entertainment with the ability to connect to other players through high-speed broadband networks. The games played on these devices have unprecedented quality, with top-of-the-line sound and graphics, often costing as much as blockbuster movies to develop and produce. Unlike other in industries, video game device manufacturers must not only protect their own products, but also the games played on their devices, often created by other video game publishers, large and small. That's why major manufacturers of video game consoles include technological protections to safeguard their platforms from infringement, as well as network and piracy threats. To prevent compromising the integrity of consoles and to ensure that players have access to safe and enjoyable game experiences, console makers provide consumers with easy, reliable, and affordable repair services whenever repairs are necessary. Many console users would disagree with this statement, including a senator from Washington who I will play you after this. Right to repair mandates present unique risks to the video game ecosystem. Video game consoles are unique from other devices, appliances, and consumer products in that they rely upon a secure platform to protect users, the integrity of the gaming experience, and the intellectual property of game developers, allowing unauthorized parties to bypass the specialized software that protects video game consoles creates significant potential for security and privacy risks. Indeed, even using the manufacturer's specification for repairs could allow an unauthorized party to modify consoles in a way that could compromise protections that are vital to providing a secure media environment. In fact, hackers and other bad actors are constantly attempting to modify or crack consoles to enable piracy and to sell their illicit services to consumers both online and in physical storefronts. While most repair shops might not seek to use repair methods for illegal purposes, such as removal or disabling of a device's security features, publication of a console security roadmap would allow bad actors to use this knowledge to undermine the entire console ecosystem. Accordingly, a right-to-repair mandate 
could have a rapid and now severely detrimental impact on the video game industry and consumers alike, regardless of how narrowly tailored it might be. Major video game console makers provide easy, reliable, and affordable repair options. I would disagree. The major video game console makers, Microsoft, Nintendo, and Sony, provide easy, reliable, and affordable repair services. All three offer their own unique, free, under-warranty repairs and affordable post-warranty repair options to ensure that their consoles remain in good working order. They also provide comprehensive online and offline support networks that help consumers to remotely troubleshoot issues that limit the need to send in devices for repairs. The video game industry employs robust digital protections for consoles and video game content. The integrity of the video game ecosystem relies on specialized software, including technological protection measures, TPMs, to prevent console hacking, deter unauthorized access to consumer information, and protect video game content. TPMs also allow a console to be securely updated with software that provides consumers with new game levels, extended storylines, and other immersive opportunities. In short, console TPMs are an effective deterrent against the use of illegally copied games. The federal government recognizes the role of TPMs in helping foster digital video game content. Section 1201 of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act makes it illegal to bypass TPMs or to distribute tools that assist in that effort. This ensures that copyrighted works may remain secure. So Section 1201 preempts state mandates that would permit TPMs to be bypassed through direct means or through the sale of tools that would enable such activity. If the right to repair legislation demanded that they release tools that enable such activity. In passing the DMCA... Congress created a regulatory safety valve. It authorized the Library of Congress, in consultation with the U.S. Copyright Office, to create a list of temporary exemptions based on, on evidence submitted in a rulemaking proceeding. In 2018, the Library of Congress considered proposed exemptions for repair. Although it granted an exemption for repair of motor vehicles and home appliances, it specifically excluded video game consoles because of the vital role TPMs play in safeguarding games and the harms that could arise if third parties were able to circumvent such protection measures. This is my opinion. The DMCA is a dumpster fire piece of legislation that is responsible for all sorts of technological regression within the United States over the past 20 years. Right to repair supporters exaggerate the environmental impact of legislation as it relates to console. Some right to repair supporters have argued that proposed legislation would have a positive environmental impact because more consumers would be inclined to fix their own devices rather than dispose of them. Which is true! Unlike other devices that may have short life cycles, video game consoles are played for years and often held onto for generations. This long life cycle is likelier to continue if repairs are performed by the manufacturer. That makes no sense, because after a certain period of time, the manufacturer often stops offering repair services for a particular device that third-party repair centers will offer. So, in my opinion, this is straight-up gaslighting. They're saying that the manufacturer is going to help you use the product longer than the independents will, but the independents are the ones that are servicing it because the manufacturer, after a certain period of time, stops servicing it. And to be clear, I have no problem with the manufacturer stopping servicing it after a period of time, but if they don't make any parts or schematics or diagrams available, then being able to fix it at all, whether it is in warranty period or out of warranty period, if the manufacturer chooses not to service it or does not service it at an economically viable price, is difficult which is why people are pushing for right to repair legislation. This long life cycle is likelier to continue if repairs are performed by the manufacturer. Older model consoles are still highly popular and available on online marketplaces because third-party repair people fix them and because the owners fix them before reselling them. Older model consoles are still a pop-up. Moreover, Microsoft, Nintendo, and Sony, and the video game retailer GameStop have robust recycling programs for consumers who want to dispose of used consoles that they may not have to dispose of if they were able to fix them. So the first thing that I want to do here is I kind of want to encourage people to understand if you actually call or email your legislator rather than post a comment in the comment section saying, Lewis, what do I do? Here is what happens. Here are the results. This is a senator that is over 50 years old and he is perfectly in touch with what is going on here. He's perfectly in touch with what it is we want. He is not one of those senators that cannot tell the difference between Facebook and Twitter. He understands the issue innately and clearly because someone from his district actually got to him before the lobbyists did. This is what happens. And it's a beautiful thing to have happen. It's absolutely beautiful when they understand the issue. However, in order for them to understand the issue, people need to contact them. So I'm playing this for you as a means of inspiration. Senator Stanford. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, a, a couple of quick points. I heard it said here that there are many options currently for repair. Um, when I had a fan break in my Xbox, I only had one option. I had to send it back to Microsoft. I had to weeks, wait several weeks. It was expensive. And then I got back a unit which was probably not 
the same unit I sent in. Uh, obviously, they, they wipe all the data uh, and, and say that you won't have any problem restoring all your accounts. And you know, maybe, maybe it's actually harder than that. Um, my point here is that this is about competition. There's no competition. If there's competition, then people would have to try to get that console repaired more quickly. Uh, they'd have to get it back to me in a way that I want it as a consumer. Um, so, so I just I wanted to kind of probe into that. I, I recognize the the need for protecting digital copyright, uh, and I I think that's absolutely legitimate. Mm -hmm. But but a broken fan is not part of that. Um, when a pad on my Xbox controller gets worn because it's old, um, I don't see a copyright problem with taking the thing apart and putting in a new pad. Um, why do I have to get a super special screwdriver uh, in order to do that? Um, so I, I mean, that, I think that's really the focus here. It's not about being able to get into every little electronic component in this thing. It's about being able to fix a USB port or a worn piece of rubber. Um, so could you, could you talk about that? See that? That is a beautiful thing. Now, there were some comments that I were reading from people while I was discussing this. And one person said, this is from Joel Maxwell, I find their old insistence that replacing a CPU fan will break DRM during a follow-up question more telling of their incompetence to the very problem they are lobbying over. Now, Nathan Proctor from US Perg said, on some level, we assume they didn't set up their repair tools to be an easy and and around all security anti-piracy measures, because that would be nuts. But they have access to those tools and we don't. So they can make claims about how they could undermine these anti-piracy protections, but we don't have the counter evidence, other than it seems nutty that this would be the case. Now, in my opinion, there is no way in hell that they have set up their repair tools with a little button that says, bypass all anti-piracy measures. That doesn't exist. I believe that the ESA is completely full of shit when they say that if we get access to a schematic that tells us what the value of resistors on the board is, or the ability to purchase a console fan or something like that, that that is going to allow us to get around piracy. The only way for that to happen is if they specifically design their repair tools that way so that they would not be something that we would have access to via right to repair legislation, or so that they could make this fallacious argument that right to repair is going to allow people to pirate video games. There's no way in hell that their repair tools over at Sony and Microsoft and Nintendo have a little button on it that says disable anti-piracy measures. I refuse to believe that exists. And if that actually exists, if that button is there in their repair tools and repair schematics and everything else, I would believe that it was put there intentionally so that this fallacious and BS argument could be made. People who want to be able to fix a console in a manner that is economically viable for the customer, but also done in a reasonable time frame, are not asking to be able to pirate everything. And honestly, let's face it, anybody that's grew up in the video game hardware community over the past 20 or 30 years, at some point, this stuff, regardless of right to repair existing or not existing, and it has not existed for the past 20 years, games wind up getting pirated on BitTorrent anyway. It hasn't really stopped people from pirating. It's been this constant cat and mouse game where they come up with a new lock, someone else unlocks it. They come up with a new lock, someone else unlocks it. They come up with a new lock, someone else unlocks it. This has been going on for years without right to repair existing, and it's going to happen if right to repair exists. Not because right to repair exists, but simply because that's reality. So that's about it for today. As always, I hope you learned something. And again, all I would ask from all of you is that if you're going to speak to your local politicians, which I suggest you do, try to get ahead of the issue. Speak to them before they see this pamphlet. If you speak to them before they see the pamphlet, there is a chance that when they finally do see the pamphlet, they'll go, oh, this is the bullshit that I was expecting. My constituents told me about this. Yeah, they want, they want to be able to buy a fan or be able to see the value of a resistor. They're not asking for anti-pirate. No, this is bullshit. You want them to, once they see this pam this pamphlet, you want them to immediately toss that crap in the recycling bin. And they do that. They really do do that if people reach out to them. The problem is that most people are completely cynical to our political system, and trust me, I don't blame them, so they don't bother. And then the only thing sitting on that politician's desk is this pamphlet. And if they don't know anything about the issue, and only one person chose to show up and tell them about it, and that's the person that's against right to repair that person wins. Again, if, if there's a debate, there's an argument, you want me to make a decision, yes or no, and the only people who show up are the no's, 
I mean, why am I going to bother looking into the reason for yes? I mean, if you didn't even bother to show up, if you didn't even bother to tell me why this matters to you, then clearly it doesn't matter to you that much. That is the mindset that some of these politicians have. And I've been in the room with them when I explained my case and I wasn't wearing a suit or anything like that. I wasn't talking all proper. I didn't comb my hair special or anything. And they you know, handshake co-sponsored the legislation. It really was that easy. And I hope for all of you to have uh, that same experience. Well, except the handshake thing until COVID's over, at least. Anyway, that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something, as well as BlackBerry. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Yeah, it's a BlackBerry. Say hi, BlackBerry. She says hi. She's my kitty. Mwah! Mwah! I love my kitty so much. He's so sweet and so cute. Anyway, see y'all later. Oh, fuck. Impact, impact. Oh shit. Ooh, yo, that was inches, if not centimeters. Oh, we're gonna hit him. Ooh. Oh shit! What? God. Yo, that, that was close. That was close. I'm used to the size of a bicycle. I am not used to this. I don't know, you're fucking with me. Oh. This is too wide. Yo, Lewis! What? Look at him. What? <laughs> Where are you getting this from? See, like sometimes the fucking It's gotta the car isn't the car supposed to beep at you or something or some shit if you're about to hit something, isn't that what Tesla's known for? No, not when you're fucking constantly side swiping people. Make a left. Okay. <laughs> it's not a left, but Okay.